Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name's Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW Blue Plan. It's Monday, so that means it is meal prep day. I have three delicious recipes for you. Breakfast, and you guys, wait until you see what I made for breakfast, a delicious protein packed lunch, and a really good snack that could also sub as an extra breakfast or even a dessert for you. So I'm super excited about today's three recipes. Make sure if you're excited like I am for today's video, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out and supports my channel. And of course, if you watch regularly or you're new and you're not yet subscribed, take a moment, hit that little subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded. I do a meal prep every single Monday, so you certainly don't wanna miss out. Check out that description box down below for my recipe website. You'll find all the recipes that I shared with you today. Also my nutrition coaching website. I offer calorie and macro calculation personalized to you. So definitely take advantage of that service. Super affordable and really important to kind of know what you should be eating every single day. I also offer 30 minute and 60 minute one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. So lots of good information on my website. You'll also find links and discount codes for the items I shared with you today, as well as all of my favorite things. And last but not least, you'll find the link to join us over on my Facebook group. We are 17,000 members strong and we would love to have you join that community as well so let's jump into meal prep breakfast this week I'm making cinnamon rolls a Cinnabon cinnamon roll dupe you guys I can't wait for this I plan on pairing this with some eggs and some fruit and having a complete breakfast for just the points of the cinnamon roll I have been wanting cinnamon rolls since the weather changed so I'm pretty stoked for this recipe so let me show you what's in breakfast you'll need low fat or non-fat milk Sugar alternative of your choice. I'm going to use Lakanto Monk Fruit Sweetener. I will link Lakanto's website and a discount code down below for you. They have some great sales going on right now, so check them out. I use a lot of their products. You can get all their Monk Fruit Sweeteners for a really good price on their website, so I'll link that down below. Also, you'll need some flour, powdered sugar. Again, I'm using the Monk Fruit from Lakanto, so again, check it out on their website. Eggs, light butter, Brown sugar alternative. Right now I have the Sucrin Gold. I do pick this up off of Nettrition. Nettrition is linked down below as well. I think once this is gone, I'm going to try the Lakanto version since it's a little more affordable with the discount on their website. But right now I have Sucrin Gold. Vanilla, I'm using vanilla bean paste just because that's what I happen to have on hand. Cinnamon, of course. Salt. Yeast to help rise the dough. And lastly, this is reduced fat cream cheese. You want a low fat or reduced fat cream cheese. So let's make some cinnamon rolls. So the first thing we're going to do is take one cup of non-fat or low fat milk, warm it up in the microwave. To that, we are going to add the packet of yeast, and then we are going to stir that into the warm milk. Make sure your milk is nice and warm so that it helps activate and dissolve down the yeast. In a large bowl, we are going to add four cups of all-purpose flour. And then we are going to add half of a cup of monk fruit sweetener or whatever sweetener that you're choosing to use. And then we're also going to add one third cup of light butter softened. So I went ahead and took my butter out about 20 minutes ago just to let it sit on the counter and soften up a little bit. Now we're going to add in the yeast and milk mixture to the flour mixture. And then you can either stir this by hand, you can use your stand mixer with the dough hook, you could use a hand mixer, whatever your preference is. I'm just going to stir it and combine it really well by hand. The, in the same bowl, I'm going to spray this with some nonstick cooking spray. We just wanna make sure the bowl is nice and oiled. And then we are going to put our cinnamon roll dough, doesn't that look amazing, in the bowl. We're going to cover it with a tea towel or something and put this in a warm space for about an hour. We wanna let it rise, basically double in size. We're going to put together the cinnamon filling. Our dough has about 
10 more minutes to rise. So in a bowl, I'm adding one cup of packed brown sugar. And again, I use the sucre and gold. I recommend this one or the Lakanto. We are going to do one third cup of softened butter. So this has been sitting out the whole time. So it is nice and soft. And then the recipe calls for three tablespoons of cinnamon. I'm literally just going to roll in the cinnamon. We are gonna have it be very, very cinnamony because that is the best part of a cinnamon roll in my opinion. Well, besides the frosting. So we're going to add that. And then I'm going to stir this together. You just wanna make sure everything is nice and incorporated. That butter should be relatively soft. So see how quickly that's softening up with the brown sugar. And you wanna create the filling. And here's what the filling should look like. So it should be nice and spread so that you can spread that on the inside of the dough. Dough is done. It looks amazing. We are going to roll this out. You could do this on a floured surface. I'm using this Pampered Chef silicone mat and I'm just going to roll this out till it's about a quarter of an inch thick, about 16 to 18 inches long and about 12 inches wide. So just Get your dough until it's about a quarter of an inch thick so that it'll roll up really nicely into your cinnamon rolls. You guys, this looks so good. I'm really excited for this. So my cinnamon roll dough is rolled out. Now I'm going to take that butter brown sugar mixture that we put together and I'm going to spread that evenly over my cinnamon roll dough. Now I don't want to go fully to the edge. Try to leave just a small amount of the edge only because we're going to roll this up and we don't want the cinnamon mixture, which is one of the best parts, to come spilling out the edge of our cinnamon roll. So go ahead and spread that nice and evenly and then we are ready to roll it up. Now we're just going to roll it up. So I'm going to start on the long edge and I'm just going to roll. And then we'll slice it into the cinnamon roll pieces. We want 12 cinnamon rolls total. So here is the whole log of cinnamon rolls. And then I went ahead and sprayed my sheet pan here with some nonstick cooking spray. So first I'm going to cut it in half and the reason i'm doing that is because again i want 12 rolls so i want to be as even as possible and then i'm actually going to cut it in half a second time so essentially into four equal pieces and then each one of these pieces has to be cut into three cinnamon rolls so i'm just going to do my best to cut them as even as possible i just want to show these to you guys oh my goodness Look at that, it looks amazing. And then I'm going to put it on my oiled baking sheet. And then it actually needs to proof again for about 30 more minutes or until this doubles in size, until it rises again. So I'm going to get these cut into my 12 cinnamon rolls, get them onto my baking sheet here, and then we'll allow these to proof again in a warm space until they double in size. You can see here that I went ahead and covered them with a damp towel, so I just, got this wet, wring it out really, really well, and went ahead and just covered up my cinnamon rolls. Our cinnamon rolls are just about done proofing for the last 30 minutes, and then I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. We'll put those in for about 20 minutes till they're brown and crispy. But while they're finishing proofing, let's make the frosting. Because like I said, that cinnamon filling and the frosting are my favorite parts of a cinnamon roll. So in my bowl here, I do have one quarter cup of the low fat cream cheese. To that, I'm going to add one and a half cups of powdered sugar. Again, this is the Lakanto monk fruit powdered sugar. It's really, really good. I am going to add a little bit of vanilla bean paste in place of vanilla extract. Six tablespoons of room temperature light butter. I did put my butter back in the refrigerator, so no worries there. We just wanted to make sure that all the butter we're adding in is at room temperature. And then last but not least, just a pinch of salt. I have my hand mixer here, and I'm just going to mix this until I have icing. Look at this icing. You can see the little vanilla beans, yum. So we're just going to set this aside while our cinnamon rolls are in the oven. All right, these look so good. They are going in the oven. You guys, be prepared for your house. 
to smell like the Cinnabon when you walk by at the mall. And they're out. Look at how amazing these look. You guys are gonna die when you hear the points and calories in these. So I'm going to let them cool completely. My icing, I'm just setting it aside. And once they are cooled, we'll ice them up and we'll go over smart points and calories. It's time to frost these cinnamon rolls. I'm so excited. So I'm going to just add about a tablespoon of icing to each cinnamon roll. I'm just going to spread it over the top, allow it to run down the side, just like a Cinnabon cinnamon roll would be. And then I'll repeat until I've used all of my icing. My points and calories include the icing, so use it all. Really lather these up. These cinnamon rolls are huge. I did try one. There was a pretty small one in the batch, so I did go ahead and give it a try, and you guys, it's Cinnabon. It is legit a Cinnabon cinnamon roll. It's delicious. It's sweet. It's cinnamony. The dough is absolutely fluffy and perfect. You definitely, definitely have to make these. So let me get these frosted up and then we'll go over points and calories. Look at these. I mean, really? Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of cinnamon over the top because I do like that little extra bit of cinnamon. I think it makes the cinnamon roll really pretty. And then again, it's a cinnamon roll, so let's bring on the cinnamon. So let's take a good look at these and go over points and calories. All right, Cinnabon cinnamon rolls in the house, you guys. This recipe makes 12 cinnamon rolls, and each cinnamon roll is six smart points on all plans. So not bad, I can only imagine what a Cinnabon cinnamon roll is point wise. And the fact that we can have this for six smart points is incredible. Pair this again with some eggs and some fruit and you have a really low point breakfast and you still get to indulge in your favorite things. So I can't wait for these all week long. I'm going to have to keep Troy out of them because he will eat them up, I'm sure. But definitely make this recipe, you guys. How amazing do these look? For lunch this week, I'm making honey garlic chicken. I'm really excited for this. You could pair this with rice if you would like. I am going to make it just the honey garlic chicken and then I'll decide day by day if I wanna have rice or potatoes with it. So I'm gonna give you points and calories for just the recipe, not counting any additional side items. But let me show you what's in our recipe. You'll need some honey. Broth of your choice. The recipe calls for chicken broth. I have this veggie broth open in my fridge. I'm just going to use that. Rice vinegar soy sauce, minced garlic, cornstarch for thickening, light butter, salt and pepper, a pound to a pound and a half of chicken, I believe this is a pound and a half, and then some oil, this is just the Chosen Foods avocado oil. So let's make lunch. I sprayed a large skillet with some non-stick cooking spray. I also went ahead and cut my chicken breasts in half to make them a little bit thinner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my thinner sliced chicken pieces to my pan here. And then I'm actually going to add the cornstarch, salt and pepper just directly to the chicken here in the pan. I'm only using one tablespoon and I was afraid that if I actually put the cornstarch in a baggie with the salt and pepper that it just would get stuck to the bag and I wouldn't even have that much to add to my pieces of chicken so I am going to actually take my tablespoon about half of it so about a half of a tablespoon and then I'm just going to shake that over the top of the chicken that's in my pan here and then we'll season it with a little bit of salt and pepper and once we flip the chicken we'll just repeat that process put another half of a tablespoon on there Just went ahead and flipped over the chicken and then added that other half a tablespoon of cornstarch, salt and pepper. So I'm just letting this cook until it cooks completely through. It is going to take a while. These are still fairly thick even though I sliced them in half. And when these get about 75% of the way cooked, we'll make the sauce, the honey and garlic sauce. Ooh, this chicken looks good. So I'm going to add a tablespoon total of oil to it, I want it to just kind of fry up and crisp up a little bit more. So once I flip it, it'll continue to fry up and let's get started on our sauce. So the sauce is super, super simple. I have one third cup of broth. So again, I use veggie broth. You can use chicken broth, whatever your preference is. One quarter of a cup of honey. 
So I went ahead and just measured that out here in a quarter cup. You can also do that on your food scale, whatever is easier for you. And then we are going to do one tablespoon of rice vinegar. I'm just going to eyeball that. And one tablespoon of soy sauce. You can hear my chicken sizzling in the background. So we're going to go ahead and add those to it, give it a quick stir, and then this is the sauce that's going to make the honey garlic. Once the chicken is done, we're going to add in a little bit of butter and garlic and let that kind of toast up before we finish making the recipe. Yummy, look at our chicken. So I just went ahead and put it on the plate and set it aside. Now to my skillet here, I've added one tablespoon of butter. And then I'm going to add just a big scoop of minced garlic to that butter. And we're going to let that cook down, saute down just a couple of seconds until the garlic becomes fragrant. Look how it just kind of picked up those brown bits off the bottom, yum. All right, now we're going to put the chicken back into the pan with that butter and that garlic. And we're going to add our sauce and we're gonna let it all kind of cook together. The chicken will really take on the flavor of that honey and garlic sauce. So I'm just gonna kind of swoosh these around, make sure it gets the garlic and the butter off the bottom. We'll give them a quick flip. Ooh, you guys are steamy. There we go. Give those a quick flip kind of in that butter and garlic mixture. And now let's add in the sauce. All right, time for the sauce. We're just going to go ahead and pour that right over the top. Bring the sauce to a boil and let it really cook down with the chicken. Let the chicken cook in the sauce until the sauce starts to thicken. It will thicken up just from the cornstarch that's on the actual chicken. It will help mix the sauce and help it thicken up. And then that's it, you guys. Once the sauce is nice and thick to your liking, you can also add in a little more cornstarch mixed with water and do a little slurry if it doesn't thicken up enough for you. So, but that's it. That's lunch. And then you could pair that with rice, potatoes, whatever your preference is. Once this is done, I'll get it into its storage container and I'll be back to share points and calories. So here is the completed chicken. You can see the sauce is nice and thick. So each day I will have one piece of chicken. The recipe makes four servings and then one fourth of the sauce. I'll just generally spoon it on top after I've warmed up the chicken. So I'm just going to store it in this plastic container and then each day again I'll pull out a piece of chicken, decide if I want rice, potatoes, maybe just the chicken, kind of see what fits into my day. But the chicken is great in points. It is six points on both the blue and purple plan and eight points on green because you do have to count for the chicken. The majority of your points are coming from the honey. So if you don't want to use honey or you want to use an alternative to honey, you can certainly do that. I'm okay using real honey and taking the points, but that is a modification you could make to lower the points if you choose to. So this is lunch, you guys, and I couldn't be more excited. For a snack this week or a sweet treat, I'm going to make chocolate and pumpkin muffins. We're still in pumpkin season, my friends, and I decided to make one more, maybe two more pumpkin recipes before we really get into Christmas. So let me show you what's in our muffins. First, you'll need almond milk of your choice, flour, cocoa powder, unsweetened applesauce, Lily's chocolate chips or whatever chocolate chip that you want to use. You'll need vanilla extract or vanilla paste. And then the recipe actually calls for nutmeg and ginger and everything that's in pumpkin pie spice. And you guys know how much I love Dax. They are salt free, no MSG, nice clean ingredients. And there is just something about this pumpkin spice that is absolutely incredible. The ingredients, like I said, are very clean. They are very simple. So what is in this is cinnamon, spices, and honey. That is it. So I think it's the honey that just makes this stand out above the rest. So I will link Dax down below with 10% off and free shipping. I highly recommend all of their seasonings. I have every one. I use them all the time, as you know. So definitely pick this one up, though. I order about a dozen of these and have them all year because it is incredible. It's a game changer when it comes to pumpkin spice, for sure. So I'm going to use that. Baking powder, salt, maple syrup. You'll also need some canned pumpkin and some eggs. So let's make some muffins. For our muffins, we're first going to mix together our dry ingredients. So I have one and a half cups here of all-purpose flour, half 
of a cup of cocoa powder. I will tell you guys, if you have a Trader Joe's, their cocoa powder is so good. I don't know what it is about it, but it's really, really delicious. So pick it up if you have a Trader Joe's. We're going to do just a pinch of salt, and then I'm going to put in a good amount of pumpkin pie spice. I would say about a tablespoon and a half total. And a tablespoon of baking powder. So we'll add that. And then we are going to give this dry mixture a stir. We want to make sure everything gets incorporated, especially that baking powder and the salt before we add in our wet ingredients. Next up are our wet ingredients. So I have two eggs. We're also going to do one full cup of pumpkin puree. You could also substitute out the unsweetened applesauce for an additional amount of pumpkin. Pumpkin is a great substitution for oil, just like applesauce is. So in the event that you don't have applesauce for a recipe, you could always sub in pumpkin puree. So I did pick up some unsweetened applesauce, so I'm going to do one third of a cup of that. We are going to put in about a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract, whatever it is that you're using one half of a cup of almond milk and lastly one half of a cup that spilt and is sticking of maple syrup so we're going to go ahead and add that now again if you want to lower the points a lot of the points of these muffins even though the points are really low comes from the maple syrup so you could always substitute another kind of sweetener if you would like but I went ahead again and used maple syrup so we're going to give this a stir we want to just make sure everything is nice and incorporated before we fold in the chocolate chips do not over mix your batter and then we are gently going to fold in lily so what I did is measured out on my food scale four servings of the lily's chocolate chips so I'm gently going to fold those in and then we're ready to get these into the muffin tin I did preheat my oven to 350 degrees pulled out my muffin pan this is just a silicone one which makes it really easy to pop the muffins out I did spray it with some nonstick cooking spray I'm going to use the large scoop I picked the scoop pack up off of Costco, Costco, no I didn't, Amazon, and it was a really, really good deal. It came with multiple sizes, and I love them for cupcakes, cookies, pretty much anything you need to scoop out, so I'm going to use the large scoop, and I'm going to start with one large scoopful of the batter per tin, and again, we want to make 12 muffins total, so I may be able to go back and add a little bit more. It's just going to depend on how much batter I end up with after filling all 12 cups. All right, muffins are going in 350 degrees. We're going to let these cook for about 20 minutes or so or until they are cooked all the way through. Pumpkin chocolate chip muffins are out of the oven. You guys, look how good these look. These are huge. I mean, they grew a lot during the cooking. So I'm going to let them cool for just a few minutes. These silicone baking, these silicone muffin pans make it really easy to pop out the muffin. And then we'll go over points and calories. And here are the muffins. You guys, these smell so good. Between the cinnamon rolls and the muffins, my house is a dream right now. These muffins are only four smart points a piece. And look at how big these are. Again, this would be a great snack. You have a little bit of protein, a little bit of fiber from the pumpkin, a very seasonal snack, and only four points, 133 calories. You can't beat it. So again, it made 12 muffins. The other three are here. I'm just going to put all of these together and store them in my refrigerator. But you guys, ugh. Thank you for joining me on this week's WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited as I am about these three recipes. I can't wait to dig into these all week long. Don't forget to check out that description box for my website where you'll find these recipes, my nutrition coaching website, links and discount codes to the items I shared with you today, as well as all of my favorite things and my Facebook group. So definitely spend a little time down in that description box. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. It means a lot to me and really helps out my channel. And if you aren't already or you're new, take a moment and hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get a little notification whenever I upload. Again, I do meal prep every single Monday, so don't miss out. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Happy Monday, and I'll see you in my next video.